asked on the radio yesterday, what's your favorite story in the book? And I said, I could never choose a favorite, ever. But I said, I can tell you the one that I was involved in. And this has to do with my friend Lynn, who will be here tomorrow. I tried to get her to come tonight, but she couldn't. She has five children, little ones. Uh, so anyway, that's a whole other story. But after we moved to Israel, you know, we went there on faith. We had no money. We had no support. And so we lived just wherever we could. Whatever was really cheap and clean and sacred was kind of the, the way we were looking. And we ended up at the convent uh, on the Via della Rosa of all places, the way of the cross. Mm -hmm. And the sisters there were amazing. They took care of us. They let us be part of their community. And we were at a meeting one night. It was an ecumenical meeting in the old city. And this uh, young, I think it was a young man, went up and asked if they would pray for the healing of his eyes. He didn't want to wear glasses anymore, and he was really struggling. <clears throat> and so Lynn wore glasses. And she had these cute little John Lennon glasses, you know, <laughs> the little round ones, and she had very long hair. And I said, you hide behind those glasses, behind your hair and your glasses. I said, you need to ask God to heal your eyes. You know, have that kind of faith. And she said, and any of you that know Lynn, this sounds just like her. She said, if God wants to heal my eyes, he can break my glasses. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, I think I felt the earth rumble when you said that. Don't challenge it. Well, we went back to the convent that night. We each had our own little cell, you know, our own little room. And we always had nighttime devotions. And then she would walk down the hall and I would watch her because we're on an open courtyard and there's a high fence around where the rooms are for safety because it was kind of a dangerous area. And so I'd watch her walk to her room and she went in her room and she locked the door. And so next morning I woke up and there was this pounding on my door. It was pounding. And I opened the door and Lynn was standing there like she was holding the glasses, I'll never forget, like this. And she was looking at me, and she was white. She just looked like she'd seen a ghost. And I said, what's the matter? And she said, look at my glasses. And it was exactly a line down each lens. It wasn't shattered. It was just a line right down the center. And I looked at her, and I said, what happened to your glasses? She said, well, did you come in my room and break them? <laughs> so this is my good friend. <laughs> you have to remember, we had no money. And uh, I said, well, why would I do that, number one? But number two, you had the door locked. And she said, that's true. She said, I must have knocked them off. I said, not broken like that. And then we looked at each other, and I think for the first time ever, we both realized that somebody passed through a locked door that had a great sense of humor. <laughs> and just literally, I don't know how, I don't know how the angel did it, but it was definitely an angel. So she said, I'm scared. And I said, Me too. <laughs> so anyway, she said, because we couldn't replace them, we didn't have the money. She said, Would you pray for the healing of my eyes? And so Florine, uh, that I wrote about in the first book, The Old Street Missionary. We laid hands on her every day. And then one, one Sabbath, we were sitting in the garden tomb, out in the garden, and Willem van der Hoven was preaching, who was just like a fiery Isaiah or Jeremiah, just a great guy. And then all of a sudden, Lynn's hitting my arm. Jew, Jew, she always called me Jew, Jew, Jew. And I, I turned around and I said, be quiet. <laughs> he's speaking and he's praying. And she said, no, no, I've been healed. And I said, shh. I said, what? What? You've been healed? And she could see all the way across the garden where yeah. before the flowers had been like a blur and the people were a blur. Yeah. And she could read. She'd been instantly healed. Yeah. And so our pastor, Dr. Robert Lindsay, took her to an optometrist because he, he wanted proof yeah. and took the glasses and told, told him the story, and the doctor examined her, and she had 20-20 vision. And he looked at her glasses, and he said, I can't believe you ever wore these, that you could see through them, because she really did have bad vision. And so that's the opening of the book, for those of you that haven't read it.